All right, hello everyone. Good morning. Thanks for being here today. Um, we are gonna get started with our day two of BenCon. So I just wanna give everyone a huge welcome to day two. We made it through day one yesterday. Um, this is the Digital Benefits Network's first ever convening. Um, and today we are hybrid. So yesterday we had around 90 to 100 people join us in person, but today we have over 400 people RSVP'd watching us and hopefully joining us um, on live stream this morning. Um, so I just wanted to say hello to everyone in person and in our virtual space. So thanks for being here. Um, a lot of you in the room know who I am, but for our live stream audience, I will introduce myself. I am Chanel Robertson, the community manager of the D Digital Benefits Network here at Georgetown University's Beck Center for Social Impacts and Innovation. Um, today's morning session, in my opinion, will be awesome, and not just because I helped plan the conference, um, but we have some really great speakers joining us today. Um, today, we'll be joined by individuals representing different viewpoints um, and experiences across all levels of government, including nonprofits, academia, industry folks. Um, and so I'm really excited because those people are folks who work on policy, delivery, and advocacy for public benefits and, re and relevant technologies. Um, so after I go over some housekeeping, you'll have the opportunity to hear from the Beck Center's executive director, Lynn Overman. And then the following panel is Equitable Tech in Horizons and Digital Benefits, and that'll be moderated by the Digital Benefits Network um, Senior Fellow Ariel Kinnan. And then following that, we'll have um, a round of lightning talks and a, our um, close out with Jen Palka, who will be debuting her new book, Recoding America, which you all should have gotten in your swag bags yesterday if you were here with us in person. Um, so. Let me go. I always forget to like really introduce myself on the right side. So we're going to go on over to our land acknowledgement. Um, we did this yesterday, but I also like to take a moment again today to recognize Georgetown's history and future by sharing a part of Georgetown's land acknowledgement. Georgetown University recognizes that the land we currently occupy was and still is the homeland of the Nakatonk and their descendants, the Piscataway Kanoi people. We offer our gratitude for the land and her people as we learn, teach, work, and commune. We are committed to supporting the indigenous members of our community as we educate ourselves continuously on indigenous histories, cultures, and issues. Thank you. All right, so um, we also went over this yesterday, but I do want to reiterate our code of conduct. Um, this slide. Uh, the Digital Benefits Network is dedicated to providing a harassment-free environment and experience for everyone, regardless of race, gender, gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, disability, physical appearance, body size, race, age, religion, or political affiliation. We do not tolerate any harassment or of participants in any form. And as a reminder, the Beck Center does um, reserve the right to determine what constitutes unacceptable behavior, and it will not be tolerated at Beck-sponsored events. Um, if you are being harassed or notice that anyone is, please, or have any other concerns, please just email us at bencon at georgetown.edu or at digitalbenefits at georgetown.edu, um, or you can just come let me or a member of our staff know. All right. Here. Um, for our community norms today, this morning um, session will be recorded and live streamed. For our virtual folks joining us, the chat and comments have been disabled. Um, but if you have anything you'd like to share, any questions, please email them to bincon at georgetown.edu. Um, and for our general norms, as always, please be kind and respectful. Um, we also ask that you be reflective and mindful and be open and honest. Um, also take the best, leave the rest, be present and please minimize use of devices. Um, but if you do need to step away or take a phone call, you can always step outside and rejoin us afterwards. Um, a note on this session today, once you entered the room, you should have received a couple of big index cards or note cards. Those are for our Q&A session. So we will have a lightning panel. I mean, we'll have our 
panel talk um, right after our introductions, and then you all will have the opportunity to ask questions. We are asking that you write your questions on that note card. You can write multiple questions on the card. Um, we'll have some of our runners in the audience come grab them from you. So if you have a question, just raise your note card in the air and someone will come grab it and bring it down to our moderators. Um, and lastly, if you haven't yet located the restrooms and water fountain, if you go out of Laura Fink Auditorium to your right and then make a left down the hallway, you'll see the vestibule with um, the restrooms and the water fountain. Cool. All right, let me take a moment to again introduce our fabulous Digital Benefits Network team. We are led by our bold and fearless senior fellow, Ariel Kennan. Um, we are also joined by our spirited and gutsy researcher, Elizabeth <laughs> Bynum Sorrell, along with our two student analysts, Jason um, Yee and Ariel Gomez. All right. Um, I don't want to keep you all waiting for the content any longer, so it is my pleasure and a great honor to introduce the Beck Center's Executive Director, Lynn Overman, for some op opening remarks. So let's give her a round of applause. Thank you so much. And I would like to actually ask you to give Chanel a round of applause because... I do not know how she has this energy level after all of the work she and the team have put in yesterday and today and moving forward. So it is an unbelievable joy to be able to work here. And I think I just messed up the screen, so I apologize. So good morning to everyone. My name is Lynn Overman, and I uh, recently joined the Beck Center as the executive director earlier this year. Uh, I wanted to share with you a little bit about the Beck Center itself and a little bit about my background and why I think the work that you all in this room and the people online are doing is so important. So the Beck Center is a uh, nonprofit institution that's philanthropically funded that's based here at Georgetown. And we're really focused on finding ways to help governments better serve people using the tools of data design and technology. Um, there are many reasons why I'm excited to lead the Beck Center, not the least of which is this amazing team that I get to work with and the students that we get to work with every day. Um, but I did want to share with you a little bit of the background and why it is that I came to this space in particular. Um, so I started my career actually as a public defender in Miami. And one of the first things that I learned was that not only were my clients grappling with the reality that they may be facing multiple years in prison, they were also grappling with other government services that were intended to provide them with stability and were not. So I will never forget, I had a juvenile client uh, who received social security checks because his father had died in prison and he was the recipient of those checks. But every time my juvenile client was booked into a juvenile detention facility, those checks stopped. And I learned that the social security administration was very good about stopping the checks and not as good at starting them up again. Uh, and so I would end up on the phone with Social Security trying to get those checks restarted because so much of Dell's family depended on that money. I remember calling multiple local public housing authorities to try to help my clients when I had a juvenile client who had one drug conviction, which would put the entire family at risk of eviction. But I will say the thing that struck me the most, and you know, anyone who's ever worked in the criminal justice system or who knows public defenders, you know you end up being the family lawyer for a lot of your clients because they need a lot of help beyond just being defended from, from the charges that they're facing. But I'll never forget, I had one adult client say to me, you're the first person from the government who's ever tried to help me. And I have to say that stopped me in my tracks because I thought how many missed opportunities have there been for this person to get help before they got to this point. Uh, and that is really why the rest of my career, I did spend a lot more time working on trying to reform the criminal justice system. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done there. But I really pivoted a lot in the direction of like, let's help folks get the services that they need to have the stability and opportunity to have productive and fruitful lives. And that is why what you all are doing here today is so important because if you can provide access to benefits seamlessly, easily. So it's just uh, just something that folks can do and then they don't have to worry about. I think a lot of our low income vulnerable populations will end up with a lot more opportunity than they have right now. And what better work could there possibly be? But before I turn this over to the DBN team and we get to the, to the uh, amazing panelists that we have today, I do want to touch a little bit more on some of the other work that we're doing here at the Beck Center. 
I want to start with our digital service network, which may be rebranding soon, so keep an eye out for that. Just focus on helping governments build internal teams of digital service experts to increase government capacity to deliver on leadership policy and implementation priorities. So one thing that you're going to be hearing from Jen Polka later today is that word implementation. It is not enough to have the funding. It is not enough to have the digital tools. You need the people in government who can actually help get these things done. And that is a critical piece of the puzzle. And I will say one of the most, uh, I think, fun things that we did recently was the Digital Services Network helped the new governor of Pennsylvania stand up their new digital services team called Code PA. And I do want to give a shout out to Pennsylvania because that is an excellent acronym. Big fan of good acronyms, and that's a pretty solid one. Um, and for folks who are interested in our Digital Services Network, our, our senior fellow Kirsten, uh, Kirsten is here today, and I encourage you to talk to her. Our data labs project is working with multiple states, and I believe several states are here that may be working with us on this program, provides in-depth support to help multidisciplinary state teams leverage data to inform policymaking and measure outcomes. And I will say last year, a state that participated in our cohort, Colorado, as a result of their participation in our program, were able to advocate with their state legislature and got $250 million investment in data infrastructure to help address their housing and homelessness problem. So the ROI on that program is a little insane uh, and we're encouraging many states to help uh, to join us on that. I also wanna give a shout out to our Intergovernmental Software Collaborative and our fellow Dom Campbell's here. I have to share a little bit of an inside joke. Dom, when he first started, accidentally called it the Intergalactic Software Collaborative. So that is now the informal and now very public name that we kind of call it in the house. Um, but it's really focused on helping governments acquire and deploy effective technology, uh, providing a user-friendly experience with reasonable timeframes and reasonable budgets. And anyone who has been in government knows those last two things are often the hardest part. And then of course, last but not least, our digital benefits network, uh, which works to improve the equitable delivery of public benefits through the use of modern, seamless, and accessible digital services. And now it is my sincere pleasure to introduce you to the incomparable Ariel Kennan. I always joke when people introduce me as the leader of the Beck Center that I'm actually just here to work for Ariel. <laughs> and I have no regrets about that. It is a wonderful, it is a wonderful job to work with Ariel. So thank you so much. And Ariel. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, it is so wonderful to see you all back here with us in person for you, uh, those of you who were with us yesterday. Um, there's also a lot of wonderful Georgetown students joining us in the audience today. And thank you all for waking up early in the middle of the summer uh, to come and join us. Um, and last but not least, um, our online audience, um, there's been tremendous interest um, in this content um, and we're so excited to share it with you all today. Um, so I'd love to share a little bit about the Digital Benefits Network and some of the work we've been doing over the past year. Um, as Lynn mentioned, we're part of the Beck Center here at Georgetown, um, and we convene practitioners both who work inside government, but also alongside really every level of government um, to spark dialogue, share new resources, um, with our end goal of supporting better digital delivery of public benefits and services. So we really believe when we have the right tools and resources and people in place, we can actually deliver a human-centered digital service for our public benefits. Uniquely, we work across programs. So we're focused on nutrition in SNAP and WIC, healthcare in Medicaid and CHIP, cash in a few different formats, including TANF, also called cash assistance, basic income, unemployment insurance, um, and last but not least, childcare. Um, we do deep listening in all of these spaces and are really thinking about challenges that underpin these programs. There's so many lessons to learn um, that aren't always being shared across those silos. And we really see ourselves as one of the real honest brokers in the space to help make those connections and also share that information with other practitioners. So we're very focused on some of our current challenges in human centered delivery. Um, there's so many things that we can be doing so much better here and now, but the Digital Benefits Network is also really taking a look to the horizon um, to see what's coming with new technologies and methods for service delivery and how can we make sure that we're evaluating those with a lens of ethics and equity um, as we decide to make new services available. 
We work in a few different ways um, at the network. Um, we host events. We have a series of communities of practice. Um, we have research that we publish and collect. And then we also um, have our own tools um, for the ecosystem where we share our own work, but also the work of many other organizations. Um, you can read more about the network um, at digitalbenefitsnetwork.org. Um, and there's information there on how to get in touch with us as well. Um, so over the past year, um, we have started both some bigger convenings. We started almost a year ago this month with Rules as Code Demo Day, um, where we heard gr eight great demos from projects in the US and internationally, um, sharing how they're using a Rules as Code approach um, to take policy into software. We have launched our quarterly call series. Um, we had our first one back in December, um, which was focused on what's next in digital identity. And then we had one um, earlier this uh, kind of end of winter, um, on uh, increasing security and equity in EBT. Um, and back in April, um, we hosted a great event with the US Department of Labor with our Office of UI Modernization, as well as the state of Illinois um, to share how they are deploying um, ARPA dollars and getting money into states um, to support modernization. Um, we also have published quite a bit of new research on um, this spring. Um, so the first of which was our digital authentication and identity proofing in public benefits. Um, this is a data set that looks at how digital identity, um, both authentication and proofing is being used um, in all 53 states and territories across the core programs of the safety net. The data is all open, reusable, accessible. Please look at it, please review it. We are, would love your feedback on it um, and also um, would love new analysis um, with that data we're really excited about. Um, we're really grateful to our partners at Code for America who have helped, helped us um, and share data with us behind the scenes for that work, as well as our friends at American Inequality um, who have helped support the data visualization um, behind that research. We also um, earlier in the spring um, published a guide um, to federal actions on digital identity, um, which takes into account things that are happening in Congress and in um, agencies and in the executive branch um, to help have more of a structural policies um, and supports and pilots um, around digital identity. Things that happen a little bit in silos sometimes in government, um, but should be much more integrated in how they're communicated with each other. Um, and just last week, we published um, our newest paper on rules as code, um, where we explore how um, policy is currently communicated by federal and state governments. Um, we're looking at specifically at SNAP rules in this report, and then how those rules are used currently in some open source projects, and then also um, how they might be able to be extended through existing standards and frameworks. Um, this research um, has been a partnership um, over the mass, past many months um, with our Georgetown colleagues um, at the Massive Data Institute, and we're so grateful we have many uh, MDI folks with us today. Um, as I mentioned, we obviously publish our own research, but we care a lot about putting um, the work across the ecosystem that should be lifted up and in the hands of a lot more people in the field doing the work. Um, and so we collect that on the Digital Benefits Hub. It's a fully also open source data set and library of all of the resources, case studies, um, and implementation examples. Um, and all of it is available fully for free, fully publicly accessible and open. Um, that project is a partnership um, with our colleagues at the American Public Human Services Association, um, or APHSA. Um, please check it out, and we also crowdsource submissions from it, so we would always love um, to get new things from all of you. And we also put out monthly and quarterly newsletters. Um, our monthly newsletter follows um, kind of a wider view at digital service delivery um, and the wider ecosystem for benefits. And then quarterly, um, our UI Tech Coalition um, puts out a roundup of all of the news happening at federal, state, and community levels with unemployment insurance. Um, you can follow the link to subscribe. Um, and also, please feel free to follow us both on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, last but not least, I just wanted to take a moment um, to thank our funders. Um, they have supported us um, in the very early visions um, for the network um, and our research um, that we have been doing for several years now here at the Beck Center. Um, so we're so grateful um, to the Balmer Group, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, um, and the Families and Workers Fund, um, who support so many of us who do this work um, across the field um, and have been here with us at BenCon too. So thank you so much. <laughs>